Welcome back to the PXGrid developer video series. In this video, we'll be going over the PXGrid architecture and providing a high-level technical overview. Let's get started. PXGrid uses the client-server model. PXGrid clients, also called nodes, connect to a central PXGrid server or cluster of servers. The server cluster handles message routing and administrative control over the PXGrid network. Typically, two servers make up a single cluster, cluster but there can be more. When a node connects to PXGrid, it authenticates with the PXGrid server and establishes its role as either a provider, subscriber, or both. Because all nodes must authenticate and be approved by the network administrator, we can ensure a certain level of trust and security on the grid. The administrator can remove clients from the grid at any time. Nodes can authenticate to the grid via certificates or username password credentials. This depends on your networking preferences. Later on in this series, I'll show you how to authenticate via sample certificates provided with the PXGrid SDK. Nodes can perform all sorts of actions on PXGrid. They can send queries, publish data, receive filtered notifications, and perform bulk downloads of published data. In PXGrid, a model must be established for a particular communication space. They ensure that all nodes speak the same language. Anyone can create a model, and they can be different depending on the given context. They serve to define the different capabilities and interfaces or operations allowed on these capabilities. For example, Cisco has created the identity model for the network security communication space. It defines various entities and establishes what these entities contain and how to interact with them. The identity model defines the session entity that contains information like a user, and one or more posture assessments. It also defines session directory capability. This capability relates to session logins on a network. The get session by IP address method serves as an interface to this model. On PXGrid, you have the freedom to design and develop your own comprehensive models in order to conveniently share different types of information. Now let's talk about the finer details of the PXGrid node and communication flows. Every node can be a consumer, a provider, or both for a variety of different capabilities and topics. In fact, ICE itself registers as a PXGrid node and publishes data for other nodes on the grid. It publishes session and identity information and consumes information for capabilities like ANC and EPS. Before nodes talk across PXGrid, they must register with the administrator. Administrators can configure ICE to allow nodes to auto-register and be auto-approved based on certificates or username password credentials. Usually, Auto-registration is used for secure or closed deployment environments. In an open environment, manual registration is recommended. The access level of PXGrid nodes is determined by the authorization group they are part of. As you can see in the slide, every node can implement four different functions to consume and publish data on a specific capability. The query caller allows consumers to query the grid for information on a specific topic. A query caller is created by assembling a request and calling the query method on the PXGrid connection. Since queries are processed synchronously, the query method blocks until a response is received from the provider or a timeout occurs. Note that the query is not directed to a provider by the caller. This is done internally by PXGrid. If there is no registered provider for the query, then an error is returned. The notification handler allows a PXGrid consumer to receive incoming asynchronous information on a topic that it has been subscribed to. The developer creates a notification handler by implementing a notification callback interface. By registering an instance of this implementation with a PXGrid connection, notifications will be received whenever a provider sends them. The handler remains live until the node is disconnected from the PXGrid connection. Likewise, the query handler allows provider nodes to process and respond to any queries that come through the grid. The notification caller will send out capability notifications to all those who are subscribed to that specific capability. To be able to publish notifications, the provider node must first invoke a published capability method on the PXGrid connection in order to establish itself as a provider for that capability. If the node does not have the right authorization group, the PXGrid server will return an authorization error. Calling notify on the PXGrid connection sends the object to any nodes connected to PXGrid that have registered for notifications of this class. Note that the notify method does not block. Here's a basic flow for a consumer query and a provider's response. The provider first publishes the capability and registers a handle for any queries made to this capability. Now any node can consume this capability. A consumer first subscribes and then registers their query caller. 
Now queries can be sent and responded to across the grid freely. Similarly, this is the notification flow. The consumer subscribes to a capability on the grid and registers its notification handler. Publishers register their notification callers and then use these to notify consumers of any new information. This diagram shows us the high-level relationship between PX Grid GCL, an example model, and customized developer code. The model will define ent entities and interfaces that define the actual function functionality for how the node behaves. The developer can then extend this model and use existing GS GCL classes to further the functionality. In the next few videos, we'll be going over how to configure ICE, download the PX Grid SDKs, and run the sample scripts. Then we'll dive deeper and actually code up a Java application that subscribes to the identity model session capability. So stay tuned.